For today's lecture, let's take a look at some sheet metal rules. And in particular, we're going to take a look at some hybrid modeling techniques when the standard sheet metal tools um, don't give you what you need or would be unreasonably difficult to use. So the first key is that sheet metal thickness is uniform thickness. If I measure between two faces on the part, it's always the same thickness, no matter where I measure. Um, I'm surprised at how many people try to violate that rule and then can't figure out why their sheet metal part isn't working. The bends are either cylindrical or conical. So uh, the bend here is uh, cylindrical. You might have a conical bend or a conical part, but the bends have to be cylindrical and conical or conical. I'm surprised at how many times I'll see somebody have a 90 degree corner which violates two rules. It's not cylindrical or conical. And then if you measure the thickness across the diagonal, it's not uniform thickness. So these two first two rules are critically important. Uh, rule number three is the cut edges are perpendicular to the flat edges. So all of these edges along here would be perpendicular to the flat edge no uh, bevel cuts on the edges. And then the uh, next two really I shouldn't have to uh, uh, state, but the, these flanges, the faces are planar. So if you have a warped face, you're not going to get a, or a twisted face, you're not going to get a flat pattern. Uh, and then I really shouldn't have to say this one, you know, when you have the part either in folded form or in the flat pattern form, you shouldn't have any intersecting faces. You know, in the real world, um, two objects can't, uh, or two features can't occupy the same space. And so uh, no intersections. And then um, in the you to, it's a good practice to always model your part as you want it finished to the dimensions that are finished dimensions. Uh, don't try to start out from a flat pattern and fold it up uh, the way it's done out on the shop floor. In CAD software you go the other way around. You model it in the finished form to the dimensions that it's going to go into the assembly, the dimensions that the customer is going to pay for, and then you have the software give you the flat pattern. Uh, the software will do a bend allowance calculation for you. The material stretches as it is bent. Um, and so if you try to flatten this up from a, or fold it from a flat part, and if you haven't done the calculations for the stretching, then your finished folded part isn't going to be correct. Um, if you are, you know, if you're not familiar with bend allowance, you need to do some uh, research on uh, bend allowance. It, certainly don't try to fold up a part if you're not familiar with bend allowance. So let's take a look at how we might do a more complicated part. So uh, this part would, uh, you know, really um, be complicated to model uh, um, using the traditional built-in tools. So let's look at some hybrid techniques on how to model that. Uh, first I will uh, turn off that canvas and I will uh, then uh, make this uh, part my active component. And uh, let's uh, roll back the history and see how I started. So originally, um, this was the part that I was reverse engineering. And to make it easier to uh, see, um, I'm going to uh, turn off the, the the uh, solid body and I'll uh, edit this sketch and so this is the geometry that I projected from the existing part and I can't find a single dimension that I can actually measure maybe 44 and a half degrees I can't measure these dimensions out on the shop floor and I checked in both inch and metric units because sometimes it's just a matter of a conversion uh, between units, but I couldn't find anything that I could measure on the shop floor. So if I can't measure it on the shop floor, I can't make it on the shop floor. I also noticed, so there was a flange distance from here to here, from here to here, here to here, here to here. All of those flange distances are slightly different. 
you know, I assume that based on these numbers that the intention was for those to be 30 millimeters, uh, but none of them are the same. Uh, they're all close to 30 millimeters. We're going to make them 30 millimeters. Uh, we're going to round off some of the dimensions because I couldn't measure that out on the shop floor. Uh, so I'm going to round off some of those dimensions. So if I uh, go back to my uh, reverse engineered part and uh, I see that uh, when I edit that sketch, I have nice simple dimensions that would be really easy uh, to measure. Now I might use a perpendicular relation or constraint in here if I knew that this was always going to be perpendicular. If I want to be able to change that angle though, I'll leave that as a, a dimension. So I did the outside profile and then offset that towards the inside. So that was my sketch number one. For my sketch number two, I drew a line with a point on it with uh, some critical distances that I want. And so if I edit that sketch, we'll see those critical distances. So I have uh, 110 millimeters and the 41 millimeters as my critical dimensions. My next step was to extrude um, the uh, first sketch to this critical dimension and then I lofted that, the base of that extrusion to uh, this point. So I have a planar face here, a planar face here, planar face here, planar, 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 planar. Let me turn off that uh, sketch visibility for a minute. So all of my faces are planar. That's uh, one of the rules is that our flanges are planar, they're not twisted. Right, then I, uh, I put uh, fillets in here for the bends. So that was another rule we had. Is that when we have a change in direction from one planar face to another planar face or flange, we have to have a bend. And so my fillets uh, represent that bend. And then uh, I split this face on top of the part because I'm going to have a flange that goes along here here and here so I use that sketch one that the offset distance to the 30 millimeters offset to split the space um, on top of the part and then I did another sketch now this one's uh, a little bit more complicated uh, and it could be done as several sketches rather than uh, one sketch uh, that what I need is, so I need, I can't have intersecting flanges. I can't have this flange intersecting this flange, so I have to cut away a portion of that um, in here and up here, here. And the reason these are all tied together here in the center is just so that I can pick that as one pick. Um, there's construction lines in here uh, tying those together. So I just did these with three-point rectangles. All of these are three-point rectangles and then a uh, constraint um, and if I let's just uh, edit that sketch and take a look at it uh, and let's turn off the visibility of the solid body for a minute okay so I uh, have some construction geometry projected from sketch number one and uh, then I did three point rectangles and I changed some of the ends so some of them will be an optic line and then at the other end of this rectangle it will be a construction line. What I want is one loop going all the way around uh, this shape to make it easier uh, to pick. And I didn't need any dimensions for that. It's all based on the existing geometry. So if I change the existing geometry, then this geometry will update. Uh, for example, the, uh, the uh, width of this rectangle is based on the radius of that fillet. So if I change the radius of the fillet, the radius of this rectangle, um, this point projected from here and this point projected from here, will change that, that rectangle. And then I split these spaces. Let's turn the sketch off so we can see that. So now I split all of these spaces so that I'll have 
uh, I'll have a, a gap between this face and this face between those flanges. We can't have intersecting flanges. That would that would not be possible in the real world, so it would violate one of our rules. And then I go to the um, I go now all of this was done up to now in the modeling environment. And so here's where hybrid techniques start to come in. So then I go to the patch environment and I delete all of the uh, faces that I don't want. And so now we see that there is a rip or a gap uh, in between there. The flanges don't uh, intersect. Uh, so um, now uh, we've, uh, we've gotten all of our cuts. Now on the original, this flange was cut off short here and cut off short here. That would be easy enough to do just editing that previous sketch. All right, then I'll create a sketch on uh, one of the uh, faces. In this case, I chose this face uh, because it's one on one of the origin planes. I prefer to use the origin planes whenever possible for sketching rather than uh, selecting a, a part face. So all of my sketches in this uh, part were created on origin planes. None of them were created on part faces. That's a more robust technique less likely to fail if you make changes. All right, and then I made a flange, actually, so when we did it, let's back up one step here. So we had the surface body here when we deleted the uh, faces that we didn't need. So it's an infinitely thin surface body. And then I uh, did a flange, a uh, sheet metal flange, and so I just have this one uh, flange here that I've created. And then if I turn on the surface body, what I did then is thicken that surface body. Remember, sheet metal is uniform thickness, so I thickened that by the thickness of the sheet metal it, and told it to, let's just go ahead and edit that. I told it to join that to my original flange, and so now I have one solid body folded sheet metal, and uh, if I want to uh, go to the flat pattern then, I can select flat pattern and there is my flat pattern. So yeah, um, if you understand the um, the rules, um, then you can um, use hybrid techniques for uh, modeling uh, sheet metal parts that you can then dimension angles that you need. You know, whatever you need, you can put in as uh, dimensions and. Um, easily make sure that you have the finished dimensions, the folded dimensions of the uh, part um, that you wanted. And so the, the key then was uh, to um, sheet metal's uniform thickness, bends are cylindrical or conical, cuts are perpendicular to the flat, uh, and uh, flange faces are, are planar and they can't intersect. Um, follow these rules and when you run into a difficult part to use uh, to model with the uh, standard uh, uh, sheet metal tools then you can use a combination of model tools and uh, patch tools and sheet metal tools so you're going through different environments to get your finished part.